Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Sally Jacks. I'm just going to give you a couple of things about uh, the immune system because of everything that's happening in the world at the moment. Now, first of all, I want to tell you that none of what I say is going to stop the coronavirus. Nobody knows. Nobody knows enough about it. Not even scientists. They're working in their laboratories at the moment trying to figure it out. Nobody knows what could possibly help because it hasn't been around long enough. So nobody has a cure or anything that can stop or ward it off at this present moment in time so if you're reading anything in the newspapers then it is uh, all conspiracy theories or something that somebody's put together that uh, we haven't got enough evidence based on it so I want to say that first of all so what I'm about to give you is not going to ward off uh, the uh, coronavirus because we don't know enough about it secondly is that I'm not medically trained uh, but I've learned an awful lot about the body if you have a look at my health and iron and obviously some of the stuff that we've uh, we're doing um, with MP at the moment and Parliament and it's to do with the immune system and uh, being poorly and um, so I'm passing on some of the things that I've learned through doctors etc but of course I'm not medically trained so if you are going to do any of these things going forward then it is better to speak to your doctor first hand. So welcome. Uh, so I just wanted to get all that out of the way, first of all, before you start watching. But I've got uh, 10 things that you need to be looking out for, for your immune system to make it healthy and strong going forward if you haven't already done so. And a lot of people um, sort of take it a little bit blasé. Oh, it doesn't matter. I've always been like this. But I think when something like COVID-19 has hit us, the coronavirus, it kind of uh, shocks us, doesn't it? That we kind of think, right, we've really got to do something about about it. Um, so here's a few things that you can do, a few steps forward for future. Okay, so uh, welcome. Um, don't forget to uh, subscribe to my channel and you can subscribe by uh, clicking the red subscribe button. It's just down here, but this is what it looks like when it's down here. And then also pressing that bell notification. Um, and that will notify you every time a new video is uploaded. The other thing is as well, is that I'm on social media. So you can catch me on Facebook, you can get me on Twitter, you can also get me on Instagram which is uh, Sally Jack's TV Mum. I'm called that on all of them if you want to go and sign up. If you are, uh, a lot of people do look at my Facebook account. I've got a lot of people on Twitter. I do competitions via Instagram. Um, so you can go via Instagram for competitions if I've got them. So I tend to sort of lead in with the YouTube because um, obviously I can speak to you privately on Instagram. You can't do that on YouTube. Right, let's get down to it. So first of all, there's a couple of things that I think everybody should know. Obviously, smoking does not help the immune system. So if you're a smoker, you do need to give up. So that's fact number one. Uh, smoking uh, breaks down that immune system. So I'm not going to go too sciencey with anything because I don't want to. To, uh, bore you or to make you go hang on that's just too much information so smoking is a no-no secondly is obviously alcohol you can have alcohol in moderation and as we know it's very good in moderation as everything is good in moderation but if you're drinking too much alcohol then you need to be cutting down because alcohol also can affect the immune system. So it's really important that if you are drinking a lot, then just back off it a little bit. As you get older as well, um, some of the, one of the things that I'm coming on to later on, alcohol can kill off um, and affect your B12 in your body if you drink too much. In fact, if you're a registered alcoholic at your local doctors, then no doubt they'll probably be injecting you with B12, which is uh, by the BNF the guidelines once every eight weeks. Um, so B12, uh, it's really Really important because b12 is part of it which i'm going to go into in one of the one of the 10 that i'm going to talk about the third thing is that um obviously overweight it is not good for us to be overweight not just for our immune systems and our the function of our immune system within our body but obviously it causes a whole host of other things uh, like heart problems, thyroid problems, um, uh, strokes, you're at high risk of stroke and all those kind of things. So you've got to be very, very careful uh, when you're carrying excess weight and it's obviously better for you to get rid of the weight. And the more that you do, the higher percentage it is. So if you're smoking, drinking and overweight, obviously that's not good for you. So eating, eating diet is one of the main things. It is so imperative that we have a really good diet. Diet is everything. Um, food is thy medicine. And it really, really is. I've learned more about this in the last 12, 12 months than I have ever done before. So what you eat is like putting bad petrol in your car. You wouldn't go and do that, would you? So it's really important that you get good, good food and you get um, everything in moderation. So we're eating a lot. Obviously, if you're vegan and vegetarian, 
you will follow one rule, but make sure obviously um, that you're getting your iron and your B12 because that's imperative for you. Um, but if you're just eating a normal everyday diet, then make sure you're getting your green leafy veg, you're getting your vegetables, you're having at least um, five to seven pieces of fruit and vegetables every single day, you're getting your oily fish, you want to get your eggs, you want to get your meat in there, your red meat, maybe even just once or twice a week. So it's really, really important that you get all those together um, to have a really good diet so you're really enriched in food because the food feeds the body without that like I said you wouldn't go and put bad petrol in your car so it's absolutely imperative so a lot of carbohydrates is very starchy and it's not good for us um, one of the best diets that you can go on is actually the Mediterranean diet that's what they say it's absolutely fantastic now the, the fifth thing is that it's really important for us all to exercise exercise is not just good for the body it's good for the immune system but it's also good for the endorphins of the head so it's good for um, some cases of mental health if you just slightly then it can lift your mood slightly I mean obviously if you are depressed anxious and panic attacks obviously you need to go to your doctors it could be other areas uh, in fact you might want to look at some of my other videos that I've done on iron because I did suffer with depression anxiety and panic attacks but that's another vlog um, but they're all on my playlist for iron and health so exercise is really good so the first five are don't smoke um, don't drink too much um, you want to lose weight you want to have a healthy diet and of course you need to exercise those are absolutely imperative not just for the immune system but also other areas of the body like your heart etc so those are really really important now, other things that you can add to or eat more of, and you can find this um, whole host of stuff on the on Google by just Googling it, you can find out what are in things for you to have that better diet if you need to up, up your game on things. But one of the most um, powerful things for the immune system, as everybody talks about, is vitamin C. Now it is. It's a very, very, very powerful uh, vitamin. Um, but, and it's really important, um, it's just a water soluble so what you don't use you just pee out anyway so it's um it's important that you try and get as much as you can so just to give you an instance for what i take in the summer i take 1000 milligram of vitamin c and in the winter i take a slow release um, it's called a slow release and i take 1500 milligrams every single day vitamin c is really good for absorbing minerals and vitamins into your body so the more you have so that could be in a, a fresh orange juice if you want to but just check out the sugar rate because we know that sugar is not great for our bodies so check out the sugar rate in your vitamin c if you're having a fresh orange drink but i take a tablet every single day and it's 1500 milligrams slow release if anybody wants to know where i get it from i just get mine from holland and barrett but do shop around they could be better ones and if you do find a better one then leave it in the description below because i'd love to hear about it so vitamin c is a very powerful obviously uh, thing for the immune system so like I said, this is going to go on forever, so I'm not going to go too much into it. What I will try and do is pick up each one of these vitamins and go into it in a little bit more depth. But one thing a lot of people miss out on, which is even more powerful for the, for the immune system, for coughs, colds and things like that. Again, nothing to do with the coronavirus because there is nothing out there at this present moment in time, because this is 2020, March 2020. There is nothing out there at this present moment in time that they know about that's going to help with the coronavirus. But what I can tell you, for infections, for immunity, uh, the better vitamin to have is actually your vitamin D. Now, vitamin D is actually not a vitamin. It's a hormone within your body. So actually, when you take it, it's a fat soluble. So unlike vitamin C, which is a water soluble, vitamin D is a fat soluble. Now, if you're vegan or vegetarian, you're going to be wanting to look at vitamin D too. But I will tell you, you do not synthesize it as well as vitamin D3. So vitamin D2 is plant-based, vitamin D3 is meat-based. And really, what you really want to be on is the vitamin D3, because that synthesizes, the process is better, the data is out there. So if anybody is going to disagree with me, then I can give you the data that's proper, proper data, clinical data that backs this up, not just data from a vitamin website or from this, that and the other, or somebody that's written it because they've taken a nutritional course. I can give you the proper, proper data that stands up, that's got clinical trials behind it to prove that vitamin D3 is the better one to take because it's synthesized better. Now, obviously getting out in the... Um in the open air you can get some vitamin d3 from food but most of it obviously it's called the sunshine vitamin um and it's really important to get out there we don't take as much in on our face we take more in our body so it's better that your forearms take it in um but of course we all lack it in the uk sadly um so 
nearly all of us are vitamin D deficient and vitamin D can actually cause some um, uh, depression and you know not not great feelings in our head and it actually um, can affect our moods etc and it also can affect our sleeping pattern can vitamin D but I'm not going to go too much into it like I say because I don't want this video to be too long so it's very very important that you take um, vitamin D3 um, speak to your doctor before you do um, obviously it's really important that you do that get your levels checked as I always say it's one of those things that I always tell you to check on your levels vitamin D but if you are going to supplement then it needs to be D3 but obviously speak to your doctor first now vitamin D any vitamin that you take always goes with another vitamin now vitamin C goes with lots of vitamins and lots of minerals and they're absorbed into the body so for instance iron if you take iron it is absorbed fourfold so that's 400% more if you're taking it with vitamin C okay so that's what vitamin C does but if you're taking vitamin D3 it's sort of twin if you will is K2 now you mustn't take K2 if you're already on blood thinners etc you must speak to your doctor first so if you're very very healthy I still advise that you speak to your GP but vitamin D3 comes with K2 so obviously I put my mom on D3 um, because I want her to be nice and healthy with everything that's happened to her. But she doesn't take K2 because she's already on a blood thinner. I think my mom is on something like Cloppy Dog Rule. So it's really important that you do not take K2 um, unless you speak to your doctor, especially if you are you are on a blood thinner. Um, but any of these vitamins, really, you do need to speak to your GP beforehand. But, K, but D3 does go with K2 and that really helps to support the immune system probably even more powerful than vitamin c it will never stop the cold nothing will ever stop a common cold unfortunately but what they are finding is that vitamin d so say you get a common cold for maybe seven days what vitamin d can do is maybe you might now this is only might obviously because everybody's different but it could be that you might only have the common cold maybe for five days so what it is is that it might just shorten that span of it but nothing can ever stop the common cold uh, because our bodies if it did if it did then we just be taking all these vitamins and just putting all these minerals into our body and nobody would be sick but of course everybody is sick but what I can get everybody is sick at certain times in their life but what I can give you is the information that I've been given to try and make that immune system a little bit stronger so that's vitamin C that's vitamin D3 uh, vitamin D3 goes with your K2 but remember what I've said before you don't take it unless you speak to your doctor now, the other thing is your iron. Your iron is a massive one, your ferritin, not from your haemoglobin as the doctor looks at it. You need to look at your ferritin levels, your ferritin and your transferritin levels. Your ferritin level is your iron store, so it's like your food in your pantry. Your transferritin is actually the lorry, so it's almost like the school bus that picks the ferritin up from your iron stores in your liver that then transports it over to your haemoglobin. And that, the percentage, really should be above around about 30%. Um, and above and also your ferritin your optimum levels you're looking at roughly 100 um, but again you need to speak to your GP you shouldn't be taking any iron supplementation before speaking your, to your GP and looking at those iron levels now obviously we all know through everything that I'm doing at the moment if you have watched me before, that GPs are lacking in um, a little bit of knowledge in this area. And that's why I was so poorly for four and a half years. So what I will recommend and I will leave in the comments section below is that you have a look at checking them and you go to Dr. Caitlin Scott at the Iron Clinic. And all those details will be in the description below for you to have a look at. So that's your iron. Iron helps with the immune system. When I was low in iron and low in ferritin, I was constantly getting chest infections. So I was constantly having respiratory problems and in 2017 they thought I had pneumonia so this is what I'm saying and it will not protect against the coronavirus but what I'm saying is if you're lower in iron then you're more likely to pick up infections if that makes sense of any kind the, uh, the next one is um, your B12 levels. I'm getting out of control now for how many I've done. So basically your next one is your B12 level. Your B12 level also makes up uh, some of your red blood cells for your heme and um, it's of your heme, of your hemoglobin. And your B12 is also part of your immune system. So it's a little bit like your iron. If you're lacking in your B12, lacking in B12 deficiency. And once we hit the age of 55, we drop on our B12 anyway. 
if you've got gut problems, leaky gut, Crohn's, uh, celiac, any of those problems, if you're on metformin, if you're on a PPI, that's a proton pump inhibitor, anything like ranitidine, uh, amoprazole, lamoprazole, anything like that, then you should really be supplementing with B12. B12, again, is a water-soluble. So what you don't use um, within 24 to 48 hours, you just pee out of your system anyway. Um, it's You can't overdose on B12. You'd have to have something like 10,000 injections every single day. You can only get B12 really from meat. Meat, eggs, chicken, uh, things like that, steaks. Uh, but it's imperative that you do do B12. And the older you get, the more imperative that B12 is taken because your intrinsic factors um, start to break down in your stomach, which the B12 needs to hold on to to absorb into your stomach lining and plus your hydrochloric acid which is your pH levels alter especially if you're on in those medications especially if you drink a lot of alcohol etc so that's really important for the immune system is b12 i've gone a bit sciencey again then so i'll try and back off a bit so the next one is uh, folate so folate and b12 come together so they were really important remember i was saying d3 with k2 b12 should be taken with b9 which is folate or as we may know it the synthetic version as folic acid a lot of people think that this should only be taken when you're pregnant but this is a load of nonsense it is very important that you take it when you're pregnant but it's a load of nonsense that only pregnant women should take it everybody should be on it and it works alongside your b12 bit sciencey again Whoa. it works in the methylation pathway of your methionine synthase so if it doesn't work you can pump as much b12 into the body if your b9 isn't there then it can be affected and a lot of people can have problem with folate deficiency with what's called mthfr which is the um methyl methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase again a little bit too sciencey for you but basically you should be taking your folate and you should be taking your b12 to give you that healthy immune system um all together so i've done um alcohol i've done smoking we've talked about exercise we've talked about food um we've talked about uh, vitamins vitamin uh what's the other one um exercise we've talked about vitamin c we've talked about vitamin d we've talked about iron we've talked about folate and we've talked about b12 now there is an extra one and i think this might be taking me over to 11 but also b6 is really important and b6 works in that methylation pathway of the uh, not the methionine synthase actually works in the sister thion b synthase of your methylation pathway so b6 is also to do with the immune system but also fatigue as well so that's another one the b vitamins are very very important water soluble um so you just pee out what you don't use um but obviously again very very important to be taking them but what i would take out of this is diet exercise eating cleaner eating healthier cut down on your alcohol cut out your smoking altogether make sure you're exercising if you, and if you wanted me to absolutely home down on one thing that's really important that we all take it is our d3 that's more important than any of them for the immune system if you wanted me to pick out one although the body works and everything works together in the biochemistry of the body so it's really important that really everything is taken um, but that is a little bit of a nutshell uh, for the immune system for getting it a little bit stronger is this going to help you now as i've just said at the beginning uh, no because if you're low it takes you ages to build that back up uh, even with supplementation and the right food even you know just going out in the sun 15 minutes it's not going to get your vitamin d level back up most of them are low with it and we cannot prove nobody can prove no doctor no scientist no professor can prove anything is going to help with the coronavirus at this present moment in time because we don't know enough about it but what i can tell you is to build that system up and to build your immune system but obviously as i always say i'm not medically trained so make sure you go and check with your doctor and do googling do go and google and have a look but have a look in proper places um, and pick up your information from proper places that have done clinical trials and data to back up their studies um, i hope you've enjoyed this video and hope it helps and stay fit stay well and take care and take care of loved ones and don't forget to wash your hands oh and another tip is if you're using alcoholic sanitizer gel never use it more than three times in one go so if you're using it at nine o'clock in the morning and then 10 o'clock in the morning, and then 11 o'clock in the morning, you haven't washed your hands, it then actually acts as a Velcro on the hands. So it has the opposite effect than what it should do. So you should never use it more than three times without properly washing your hands with soap and water. And that's what I was taught by the NHS 
on uh, C. diff and MRSA training that I had before I used to go and do ward liaisons around hospitals. So that's proper training from the NHS about alcoholic rub. It should be used in emergencies. It is good to use, but soap and water is far superior. Uh, anyway, take care and I hope you're all, I hope you're all well and I hope you're all lovely. Let's get those immune systems built up. Might not be for this time, but it could be for next time. I love you lots and I'll see you later. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to give us a thumbs up and leave your comments in the section below. Love you lots. See you later.